Hey Siri, what's on the calendar for today? Here's your appointment. All day today, TEDx. How many of you have ever casted a vote? Good. So if you are casting a vote, how do you make sure that the person or the purpose you voted for gets the vote? Do you have any proof of that ever? You hear the same story from the US to India, two world's largest democracies. People always have insecurities after casting a vote. Then there is re-election or even recounting. But isn't it funny, like after that re-election and recounting, most of them don't feel insecure? I would say it's just a waste of time and money again because that re-election and recounting, it's happening under the same governance. Why would you believe second time the same system if you already had allegations against it at first place? This is one of the perfect example where blockchain technology could be the solution. But what is blockchain technology? The incredibly popular, but at the same time, boring topic again, right? Yeah, I can see some faces in audience saying that to me. Well, it was same for me until I actually come to know what exactly this weird technology is. Like, why weird? If you see the popularity of this topic and you go on Google and search blockchain, you'll get almost 244 million results. And by summing up those results, it's a technology which is trustworthy, you don't need any central authority, and it's transparent. Sounds pretty good, right? But then comes the statements like it's an incorruptible, immutable, and distributed system. What does that mean? Well, I've also heard people saying blockchain is Bitcoin, the only application of blockchain is cryptocurrencies, and blockchain can only be used in financial sector, which is not true. It's like saying Switzerland is the whole world and whole world is Switzerland, which just does not make sense. I mean, until we go to war with every country and take control of them, then we can say that. But I don't think our government is planning to do that, at least not in near future. But I don't blame people who have this concept because that's what they have been presented with. So many misinterpretations of a technology which can actually solve a lot of problems we have in this society. Well, to keep it simple, it's just an online distributed system which can store information. That's all you need to know for now. My goal with this talk is that when all of you go out of this room, you will know the basics of blockchain and how it can change and it can make this world a better place to live for everyone. This technology was first described in 1991 by a group of researchers, but it was never been so important until 2009 when a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin used it as a first blockchain-based cryptocurrency. Wait, what was our previous knowledge about blockchain? It's an online distributed system which can store information. Now we're gonna add some detail. Again, same. It's an online distributed system which can store information and it's based on interconnected blocks which are open to everyone. Like it's clear from its name, blockchain. It's a chain of connected blocks which can store information. There are three things on every block. First, data, which is the information we store on block and that depends upon the type of blockchain. For example, cryptocurrencies. They store information about the sender, the receiver and transaction. The second thing, every block contains is the hash of that block. And that hash is the fingerprint of block. It's always unique. And we use that hash to identify that block. 
third and the last thing every block contains is the hash of previous block, which connects the current block with remaining blockchain. And that's the property which makes this technology so secure. There's also another property which makes this technology more secure is its peer to peer nature of work. Like instead of having a central authority, which normal banks have, a central authority which contains all the information about every other block and they manage blocks, blockchain allows everybody to join and whoever joins gets the information about every other block. And by using that mechanism, we can actually identify and prove that everything in the blockchain is in order and nothing got cheated. As most of you are about to get lost. Let's take a real life example, which will clarify these points. There are three friends, Anna, Carmen, and Kolo. Anna has $100, Carmen has $60, and Kolo has $40. Anna and Carmen, they are already in blockchain. So they both know about each other. Carmen knows Anna has $100, and Anna knows Carmen has $60. If Kolo wants to join the blockchain, he has to provide the proof that he owns $40. And on the basis of that proof, Anna and Carmen can accept or reject him to the blockchain. If Kolo have accepted into the blockchain, so now he will get a copy of information about Anna and Carmen as well. So all three of them now knows about everybody how much a single person owns. Let's say there is somebody who wants to cheat the system. For example, Carmen. She wants to send $200 to Kolo, but this transaction cannot happen because Kolo and Anna, they already know Carmen only have $60. So she cannot do transaction which is more than $60. So that's how whatever I said before was summarized. But why do we need this technology? There are several reasons behind every technological change. First, why do we have to pay a third party huge amount of extra fee just to do a transaction between two already agreed parties? If we can do that transaction more efficiently and in a secure manner, just by depending on technology. And the transactions, which normally take days to process, we can do that in almost real time by using this technology and without even paying that huge amount of extra fees. Or, for example, if I'm buying a medicine, how I am sure that it is coming from the same manufacturer which is written on the box, or the date which is written on the box is correct by just looking at stamp or the label I can see on the box. In the end, I must trust the seller. It doesn't end here. How many of you have ever bought something online? Good. For example, eBay. We don't know the seller. The only thing we can see is ratings, reviews, or sometimes feedback. And we are also not sure that that's the original one or it's just faked. And I am supposed to send the money even before receiving the product. What if I will never receive the product? Will I get my money back? Well, there are many other needs, but I would like to highlight the one which I always feel insecure about, my taxes. How I am sure that the money I'm giving to government, they are actually using that thing on me, or they are ev even be using it, or am I supposed to pay that much money in real or not? We need this technology because it can save time, it can save money, it can reduce risk, it can increase trust, and we don't need any central authority for that. What can be future of this world if we use this technology in several of these cases, like starting from supply chain management, in which we manage the whole process of a product or service from its manufacturing to the delivery. 
So during this process, a product goes from multiple channels and every channel is owned by different company or at least different department. And if we need information about the product, sometimes they need some more time to give us information. And in the end, we will get the information, but with delay, or sometimes we don't even get it. And also, if we implement blockchain or if we put this supply chain management process into blockchain, we can see where exactly our product is, how long it will take to reach us. And the thing is, we are sure because of the blockchain, the information we are getting, it's not changed or it's not cheated with. Or take example of real estate business. It can make our lives easy in that. We buy and sell property. Normally, we go through several processes, several verifications, like government offices, landlords, or authentication of ownership. And we are also not sure that the information we are getting is actually original or it's just changed. If we use blockchain in this scenario, first thing, we will be sure that the information we are getting is authentic. Secondly, we can see who were the previous owners, how long they stayed, when the last renovation was, and who is currently owning the property. And on top of that, without any paperwork. Or let's put yourself into a situation where you need a specific blood group. You have to call hospitals, blood banks, or some foundations. Why don't we put this information into a public ledger where everybody can see that from where they can get that specific blood group without even contacting any third party? Now, the use of blockchain I am most passionate about. Helping people in underdeveloping countries and eliminating poverty. Think of a person who is living in South Sudan, Somalia, or Kenya. Regardless of the fact that he is having great intelligence and a wonderful idea, if he wants to start his own business, probably he has to pay some bribes, or he has to convince some officials, or in a perfect scenario, he doesn't have to pay any bribe or he doesn't have to convince any officials. What if he wants to take a loan? First of all, he will never get a loan. Even though he will get it, he has to pay huge amount of interest on that. And few of the reasons behind these problems, first, either the government is poor because of corruption or the bank doesn't have security from the person because they cannot see any previous record of that person or they cannot see any authentic documents of that person. If we use blockchain in this scenario, first, that person don't need any third party to rely on. He can start his own business without even including any second person. Then, every public document related to that person will be available worldwide. And because of blockchain, the banks will be sure that these documents are not cheated with or they are not changed. So these are original. Also, the government will have a public check because of the transparency factor of blockchain. Just ask this question to yourself. Why doesn't every human being on this planet have equal opportunities? Why do some people have to struggle more for their goals just because they were born in a poor country? or in a country where the government is corrupt? I'm not saying blockchain is a solution to every problem, but the future of this world can be great if we let this technology grow in these areas. And we do need huge amount of research for that. I will end my talk with a statement that is based on my research and knowledge, which is, I believe blockchain technology has potential to change the way this world has been working for centuries and make it a better place to live for everyone. Thank you.